you go in, your night move, dual wing beat, slash through, slash through. That's that's 9,000 damage. Do not ever use sword dance. It's double hit, dash away, that, go in, bang, bang, bang. He's so far ahead. The, the, the enemy jungle is level 6. He's level 10. And if HT can do this against Talon, which are probably the best team in the Philippines, right, then you can do it in your solo queue lobbies if you practice this Pokemon well enough. The build with Scyther. Let's have a look at it. Emblems are fairly straightforward. Um, we use brown and white emblems. This isn't even optimized, but yeah, brown and white emblems. Uh, your battle item is full heal, and I just don't think there's any negotiating it because you need to get your combos off. This is a high skill cap character. Uh, your other alternative, if you're a little rookie or you want some training wheels, would be the eject button, but ultimately full heal is definitely. The held items you would run with Scyther is Razor Claw, definitely. Energy Amp, definitely. Attack Weight, definitely. I think the only... <laughs> there's look there's a couple of different items that you could consider running um i probably wouldn't run a scope lens i wouldn't run a focus band you could maybe consider a float stone if you want extra mobility but i just think you're hitting your skills a little too often to be uh, using a float stone um i probably wouldn't recommend an aos cookie although it will make you a little bit bulkier you are a jungler and sometimes you will not be getting all of those stacks uh weakness policy is an option but generally you're not brawling you're going in and dashing out and doing a lot of burst damage, so weakness policy might not be the best item. Um, Cursed Bangle is an option, but I think there are other offensive items that just give you a lot more value than that Cursed Bangle. Charging Charm is definitely a strong contender, um, but I just think that you're going to get more value out of using a Razor Claw over the Charging Charm. Uh, Drain Crown, no, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So Muscle Band, probably not. I just stick with these items energy amplifier is absolutely key to pop off and do huge damage with scyther so the first thing with scyther is understanding his ability every time you use a skill the next auto will launch off two auto attacks now this is useful for managing your boosted auto when you get a boosted auto you'll see if you're just attacking one at a time here okay just one at a time you'll notice there's like a green aura around the scyther right I'm going to move around here. Not as fast. Hit that boosted. You get a little bit of speed increase. Every time you land a boosted auto, you get speed increase. And every time you use a skill, you get two autos that immediately follow up. So you can do a boosted and then use your skill and then follow up and then use that and then do another two autos there. And you get speed increase quite a lot. So this is just something to keep in mind. Every time you use a boosted auto, you get a slight speed increase for a short amount of time. And every time you use a skill, the next auto you do will cast two autos. So you can have one basic auto stored up and then go in with a skill and attack twice and you will have that movement speed there with you. You get your first skill at level 5. Now to be a Scyther, you have to pick Dual Wingbeat. So Dual Wingbeat, you can see it's got quite a large range there. It's really, really valuable. It does two slashes, right? On the second slash, you gain Lifesteal, which is really, really useful. Okay, that's that's it's really really good poke as well at that uh, eight minute fifty arteria, right? You can sit in a bush. Okay, you can sit in this bush here, and you can actually hit these arterias and do quite a chunk of damage uh, on them. So it's really really useful there, right? You'll notice that every any time you land your wing beat, you've got a second uh, skill that can follow up. It's a dash. That dash is probably one of the best executing moves in the game. It does 20% execution damage to the enemies, and you can keep it stored there for 5 seconds. So it's really, really good at securing farm or picking off a key KO. So that is essentially dual wing beat. The next move you get is double hit. Do not ever use sword dance. Sword dance for scissor, double hit for side. So let's talk it through. Double hit you can see that it's it's a dash. You dash in a direction, right? This Pokemon is oh, it's fantastic mobility, right? When you land a double hit on the enemy, you can bounce in a particular direction and you leave an X on them. And you can actually follow up with an enhanced auto. So there's a lot to break down here. Firstly, when you bounce on them, you leave that X there. If you kill that enemy with the X, all of your skills go on cooldown immediately. Immediately. So it's really, really great. Uh, when you bounce with double hit, you can dash in a particular direction, right? You can go back, you can go forward, you can go in any direction you want. So make sure you're, a uh, you're aiming that left analog stick if you're playing on a pro controller. 
to pivot off in a direction and it's very quick so you have to be quick with this right you have to decide and then this followed up boosted auto you just click b and it's going to follow up with a great amount of range there so this can be really useful if you're trying to dash off go back in hit your dual wing beat and then do some nice stuff there right but the key thing with your double hit is this x mark there right the other way to put an x mark on the enemy is to use your unite move now your unite move with sizzle is a dash on and you can see dash towards an enemy and there are five copies around you you can then dash again and those copies will go directly towards you now you'll see and i'll wait for this x to go away when you launch that x onto the dummy see it's got an execution mark on it right it has an execution mark that means when you kill that dummy all of your skills can go on cooldown if you kill that dummy so there's two ways to put that x on double hit will do it and your unite move will do it dual wing beat will not do it so just keep that in mind if you want to get those skill uh, cooldown resets you need to be knocking out and it's an enemy it's not a piece of farm right very very key okay now your unite move you go in with it and you can see you've got another dash that you can do those copies will go to you right so generally you want to go past the enemy and sweep through and then maybe go back with double hit and land your dual wing beat and then go in with an enhanced auto and then finish them off get your skills back on cooldown right this this pokemon is the skill cap honestly is infinite right with cypher it is seriously infinite okay secondly when you get level 11 you get dual wing beat plus all this does is do it, it, it just does more damage to the enemy right that's all it's going to do those two slashes do more damage and the dash does more damage so it's really really nice there and when you hit level 13 the cooldown of a double hit is reduced by one second which is not really a big deal because generally you're you're you are using this double hit to mark an enemy to be able to kill them right so so this is the combo that you can do with uh scyther you can dash on an enemy put that mark there hit them with that dual wing beat press a to follow up with more damage dash through them and then you can go in with that unite move and clean them up if you do that combo very quickly you are going to kill literally anything in the game within one second literally anything in the game like except the big 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 tanks if you pop that full heal and you and you launch that combo off onto any all-arounder attacker supporter just anything minus a defender and you've got levels on them you will delete right it's double hit dash away that go in bang 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 you will destroy whoever you're trying to hit now there are lots of combos that you can do with scyther okay the last thing to mention with this unite move is that each of these copies that hits the enemy it will actually heal you so it's quite a large chunk of lifesteal and the boost you get you can see you get a small shield right you get a small shield but it's the movement speed it's the big movement speed that's the big one and you want to launch off as much damage as you can because you have an energy amp and because you get a kill when they're marked with this x all right you can see how much damage that does just that right there at level 13 that's doing like 3000 damage just the unite move alone all right so you can imagine if you go in dual wing beat go in slash him go back through you are just like look at how much damage this is doing let me reset it back to zero this is no uh, double hit by the way so you go in your night move dual wing beat slash through slash through that's that's 9000 damage right there as a level 13 site that is so much damage you can pretty much delete everything right and this can happen very quickly right pop your full heal go in bang 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 that happens within a second right literally happens within a second or you can even just double hit from a distance then pop your full heal go in slash slash Right, just does so much damage guys. does so much damage so the combos you can do with scyther skill cap is infinite and um it's really down to how you play your macro you can steam roll with this character so this is this is by far the best display of a scyther i've seen in a competitive match ever uh, th th this is just phenomenal so uh th this is team mys ht is playing the scyther and you can see how strong it is early right he notices that the um orange team are pushed far back on their pad so he's essentially just getting some free stacks in right espion and glaceon have hard won their lane and he's coming down to this bottom lane to get some free stacks he's already uh, he's about to hit level six right taking all of this farm in this bottom lane which is like really really good 
And then you can see he immediately looks to rotate through to the top lane because they are overcommitted on the enemy goal there. He's level seven. He's getting these move resets. So have a look. Goes in, gets a big, big follow up there with the double hit, gets the move resets, right? Now he's got that double hit again and then goes through with that dual wing beat, right? He's just getting these huge combos off and then stacks in the top lane. He's already level eight, guys. He's already level eight. It's not even eight minutes yet. And have a look at how he punishes the enemy team, right? Well, if you're going to be slow for your jungle there, then I'm going to come through and take it as a stacked level seven or sorry, level eight Scyther, right? So he's level eight and have a look at how the enemy team has to respond. Uh, like he's going in, he's got his Unite move and he's just killing them all. He's killing them all. He's getting these move resets, right? Look at how much damage he's doing. He's literally just killing their entire team in their middle area. So you can steamroll with this character. And the, the reason why is because he's getting these move resets. It's go in, you know, double hit, your night move, dash through, get the move reset, get the dual wing beat and the double hit again. You've got too much mobility, right? It's eight minutes, guys. Seven minutes, 20. And he's already level 10 and a half. He's so far ahead. The, 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 the enemy jungle is level six. He's level 10. This isn't a competitive game of Pokemon Unite. This is by far the craziest display of Scyther I have seen. And if HT can do this against Talon, which are probably the best team in the Philippines, right? Then you can do it in your solo queue lobbies if you practice this Pokemon well enough, right? And look, it, you, you've got full control of the game at this point, right? You want to win bottom? Just go bottom and win, right? It, and because he's got this energy out, look, he's already got his Unite move again, right? So. What they're trying to do now is they're trying to pull this Reggie Steel so the enemy team comes in and the Scyther can go in and just and just kill them. That's what they're trying to do, right? They're, they're trying to pull the enemy team in. So this Reggie Lecky, uh, sorry, the, this <laughs> this Reggie Steel comes out and you can see what he's going for. He's double hitting over, launches that Unite move, gets those skills resets, follows up, gets all those kills, right? Then he gets double hit and dual wing beat again. Look, gets it on the slow bro, gets the follow up. Now he's got dual wing beat and that... Um, Double hit again, right? He's literally, he's like level 12, guys. It's the first objective. He's level 12. He's about to be level 12. This is just absolutely ridiculous. It, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, right? So early game with Scyther, generally I like to take a bow toy and then take my buffs. And this is because I know I'm going to be staying in the lane a little longer to try and get a stack or two in. So it saves the rotation of the buffs coming a little bit later because I know I'm going to be back at those buffs just a tiny bit later than I normally would be. Um, the reasoning for this is because if the enemy decide to immediately invade me, I buy myself some time. Now notice I'm going to this lane, not getting seen, waiting for the enemy to overcommit and I'm um, trying to do a bit of damage, but I've ejected out there, right? So I am playing playing training wheels in this game, guys. This is when I was first kind of learning to cite the combos, right? So he's ejected out of that, um, that dual wing beat follow-up. So I'm just focusing on getting as much farm as I can, right? We get kill there, but I notice both of my laners go down. Um, so I'm not gonna stick around for too much longer. I'm just maintaining the lane pressure, making sure they're not getting too far on our side of the map, pushing our goal. Now, one thing I could have done is invaded. Um, however, I do think that I'm probably not as ahead as I could have been. I didn't get any big key KOs there and get any stacks. So I'm just going to rotate through to my jungle because when you get level seven, this is when you start getting some move resets with Scyther. This is when you get the double hit. You mark those enemies with that X and you can get those big uh, you can get these big combos off. So I'm I'm valuing um, putting some pressure and getting some vision in the top lane here, noticing that they're not coming down, so I can just get pretty much all of this farm for free. Um, our Blastoise does a really good job at zoning the enemy Masquerada there, which is great. And um, yeah, I'm just kind of trying to take as much farm as I possibly can. Now, rather than going back to my mid, I try and get a surprise gank into the top lane here. I can see that their Blastoise gets a little low, so I engage there, um, and I get the follow-up and the move reset there from the double hit and the dual wing beat, so there's two quick KOs, and that's something Scyther can do really, really quickly. Now, I didn't actually do the quick maths here, and I've broken evenly. This is a very bad play. Shouldn't be doing this. I just didn't realize 7 plus 5 equals 12, and the goal zone wasn't 12 quickly enough. So very poor play, um, and I definitely should not be doing that. Right, so I've completely broken top, top's looking okay, uh, but the enemy have completely broken the bottom lane. So in this case, I recognize I've only got two stacks and I would like to get some more stacks and I would like to make sure we hard win this top lane. I've got my Unite move, so I can pretty much take on anyone who tries to come into this top lane. 
Um, the Decidueye gets a huge arrow on me, and I have to pop my Unite move, which is, you know, a, a, a little embarrassing, to be honest. Um, I shouldn't be putting myself in that weak of a position. Um, you know, however, that, you know, that's, that's how it is sometimes. And now we get the kill on him, and I'm just walking through the enemy jungle to make sure there's any farm I could be getting there. There's no farm going through there, and that Regilecki walks in. So I'm going to be getting a big 40 score, and this is stack number 3. I recognize that their Decidueye is not going to be getting any healing on that base, so I can kill him. Stack number 4, stack number 5, and now I'm fully stacked with number 6. And our Leafeon somehow secures the bottom lane objective. Somehow secures it, right? Now at this point... This is just mega fortunate, mega, mega fortunate, okay? Um, I've made this decision to stay top because six stacks for me, end game, is very, very good versus two stacks end game. And you've got to get your stacks in before that five minute mark. Otherwise, to be honest, you're kind of just throwing for your stacks. So if there's a time to try and do it, it's that time, especially when I'm ahead and I can um, just use my Unite move to kill some of the enemies there. Okay, so very, very fortunate, but you can see the level difference we've got here. We're approaching level 12, and now we're just taking the enemy farm away from them, maintaining our lead over the enemy. So we take their middle arterias on their side, and I can see that their um, Decidueye is going after me, and I've got my Unite move again, so I'm just like, well, if you want to fight me, that, that's totally fine. And I can see I'm getting converged on by a couple here, so I'm trying to get that move reset on the Elder Goss, which I do successfully. Um, the uh, Blastoise comes in to try and get me. The Serena pops an X speed, and unfortunately, the Serena does catch up to me. I turn around. I shouldn't have turned around because I wanted to get that dash away, and it gets the Unite move on me and kills me. That's a really, really poor um, decision on my end. I should have continued to run, and my team would have CC'd him, so I could have gone away. And so at this stage, we have got our level 12 by the five minute mark. Unfortunately, we gave a bit of catch up experience back to the Serena. Um, you know, but these things do happen. I could have played that better and a little bit more defensively. Um, I'm trying to put some pressure onto the enemy. I use my eject to get away that's training wheels. If I do my combos properly and I choose my engages, I will not be putting myself in a position to do that. Uh, the enemy threw quite a lot of Unite moves there to try and get me. Um, but you can see you get quite a lot of healing back with that dual wing beat second dash. Uh, sorry, the second slash. So I don't necessarily need to base, right? I'm already back to 50% HP. Um, just with the dual wing beats. It's really, really good. Now, these kind of decisions, they're just mid-game macro. I can see that our team is in a situation where we are valuing this bottom objective. We've got four people down here and they're zoning. So I'm just quickly trying to rip this Reggie ice uh, as fast as possible um, because that's what our team is looking to do, which is really, really nice. There, we're going to break that bottom pad with a nice little overcap at 29, um, which is worthwhile. Okay, and we're just continuing to clean up this farm throughout the middle of the map. Right, I noticed that I'm getting converged on, so I put myself in a position where I'm in a bush. And if the enemy decide to run into our jungle, especially like the, the Decidueye, for example, they're in a lot of trouble, right? So I'm, I'm keeping vision here, and I can see that they're definitely over committing, trying to get our buff. Two Unite moves are used in our jungle, and this is the last time to try and get them used. Um, the Serena does get away, but I do pop my Unite move, and I am going to get some move resets here. I'm going up this Decidueye, and I do get the KO on him. And then I'm looking at this Blastoise. I try and let my double hit, but he actually ejects away. And I think that's just a lucky eject because he didn't know I was in that bush. Or I, I don't think he anticipated that. I think he was just trying to get away from my teammate there. Um, so we're level 14, one minute to the Rayquaza. And I'm kind of eyeing off level 15 at this point. I can see that the Masquerade is overcommitted to get a little bit of score. And so it's essentially my job to come in here and just clean him up, right? Um, he's got so much mobility though, and he gets that um, invincibility to be able to get away. And um, yeah, unfortunately, I can't catch a mouse rider there. He's just a little bit too quick. So in that case, I'm just trying to put some pressure on to take the enemy farm away. And yeah, you can see that we, we there's a Reggie up in here, and I'm just playing it in a way where if the enemy overcommit, we can just pull them immediately with Psych. Right? So that's what we're going for. I'm just going to rotate through and take both of these buffs and then look at the Rayquaza positioning, right? Now, this is very, very important when you're playing Scyther. You cannot, and I mean, you cannot run in, like, head on onto the enemy at the Ray fight because you will just die. Like, considering how level we, we are here, right? We're almost level 15. If I, if I took one of these in DDs, which I would do if I was playing with my friends to say, hey, just slow down at Ray. I'm hitting level 15. But I can see our team is spamming Gather here, so... I'm just gonna 
you know, go there because they might engage in a fight and I need to make sure that I'm there. So I'm trying to the attack threat. the enemy from side on. I'm not going to go, if I, if the enemy engages on my team here and I engage from head on behind them, I'm going to be in trouble because their skills are aimed towards that direction, which means those skills are probably going to be colliding into me. So this concept of attacking from side on means that if the enemies are using their skills facing that blast toys, they're going to be faced away from you, unless if they're AOE skills, and you can attack them from side on and dodge that damage and be the follow-up damage, you know, killing machine that your team needs you to be. All right, so I'm putting myself in a, in a sneaky position, all right? I get scouted out by the Elder Goss, that's fine. I run away, I try and reposition into a different spot, and I, I can see that there's a lot of damage going on to either our Pikachu here and our Blastoise, which means that I'm essentially attacking from behind or side on because those skills are facing away from me. And a lot of Unite moves have already been popped off to take on our Mr. Mime and our Blastoise um, and our, by the looks of it, Pikachu and Leafeon has just been instantly deleted, right? And you can see there's a lot of Unite moves going off there. There's a Decidueye back there. So we can go in and pretty much kill everything here, right? There's a big combo you can get. They all get stunned um, from that Unite move from the Blastoise. And it's essentially just free damage, right? Now I use that Eject to pick up five KOs there. And then we score 100 and the enemy pretty much just quit, right? Because now we've got a very big lead and um, we've, we've got pressure, right? They don't have any more Unite moves, but they know they're dealing with a level 15 Scyther. Um, I do think the forfeit from the enemy is is a little bit unnecessary. I actually feel like they could have won the game from that point. Um, but I was just spamming retreat and back out. You can see these damage numbers here. You want the damage numbers to be reflective of successful kill involvements. There's no point getting 150k on Scyther and getting like three successful kills, right? That's probably not going to happen. Because remember... KOs equals move reset, move reset equals more damage, and um, hopefully not dying at the same time. 